Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to do another discussion on Linux software. And um, today we're going to talk about video transcoding. And transcoding is a very useful tool. Sometimes I'll transcode or like I'll, I'll render a video in Caden Live and I might want to make a smaller copy. For example, if I'm uploading to BitChute, which only supports a 480p video right now, I will usually scale my video back to save on bandwidth uploading the video. Sometimes I get something that's just a little bit too large. You need to make it a little bit smaller. Sometimes you need to crop the size. I might want to do maybe, I don't know, a few other little odds and ends. And so we're going to look at Handbrake. Now, Handbrake also has one other factor that we have to be cautious of in our current world, and that is Handbrake will allow you also to create a copy of movies that you might have. Now, in some countries, you are perfectly legal to take a copy of a movie that you own and make a digital copy of it. Other countries, it is not legal. Other company countries, it is Nobody's tested the laws uh, because we do have here in the United States, we do have a legal right when we purchase something to use something. But there is some weird questionable elements of the DMCA that possibly a DVD may not be able to be used. Let's first and foremost cover what would be completely illegal. So never do this. You can't borrow a movie from a friend and make a copy and keep it for yourself. Not allowed. You can't rent a movie from a red box and make a copy of it. Not allowed. Don't do those things. That is not the case. But if you happen to have a big movie collection and you're worried about, you know, an EMP knocking out your DVD player or you want the convenience of watching a movie from other different places, then look at all the different elements consult possibly some legal authorities and then decide, do you want to make a copy of movies for yourself? So I'm going to show you how to do that today because I realize there's countries that it's completely legal. There's countries that's not, so don't do that. And there's countries that it's questionable. And so you need to weigh your own ideas and your risks. But Handbrake does go way beyond just that. So we're going to cover, first we're going to actually go ahead and cover what is always acceptable cases for this software package. So you can find Handbrake inside of uh, pretty much any repository. I've never seen a uh, I've never seen a repository does not that does not have it. And notice it's Handbrake B R A K E. Every now and again, I try and type in B R E A K, and as I can't find it, what? Oh, typed it wrong. Duh. <laughs> so uh, we go ahead and uh, make sure to get it installed. And uh, the versions have not shifted a whole lot lately. This is the Linux Mint. Uh, from uh, the Linux Mint repository. So this is 1.3.1. Um, and so anything we do here applies to that. Handbrake has not changed significantly in a while. So let's go ahead and talk about the various elements that we have. We have open source, which is basically open your file, uh, either your file or uh, a disk or whatever else you're trying to do. And then when you open something up, it's going to scan through things. It's going to pull out a variety of different options. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to grab just the raw video file. This was the video file that I did the other day uh, walking through the desert. You can see that this video file was 1.2 gig after I ran my, I ran it through and edited it a little bit in um, Caden Live. It was 873 megabytes. So let's go ahead and open this guy up here. So when you first open it up, it's going to scan through if there's any chapter divisions, if there's any metadata, all of that kind of stuff is going to be here. This is going to give us some basic presets. And what we can do then with the presets, my pardons if you um, hear the cat playing in the background, that would be the kitty playing with his little mouse. I'm not going to disturb him because that's exercise. <laughs> if you know my cat, he needs exercise. Uh, so uh, anyway, back to the video. When you pull this in, you can choose the output on this version is the save as file down here at the bottom. You can choose an MPEG-4. Um, you can choose a, a matric, uh, is it matric? Matricosa, whatever that format is, the open source video format, uh, or you can do the WebM format, which is also an open source format as well. 
So you can choose whatever you want. You can go with the web optimize, which is going to add a few extra things. It's going to make it just intrinsically smaller without trying to do much else. So if I'm going to be transcoding something to upload uh, because I want to make some other adjustment, I always hit this web optimized just to make it a little bit tighter in bandwidth, which is good. And then there's iPod 5G support in there as well. Under the dimensions tab, we can choose to do some form of cropping. So if we want to crop something out of it, we can choose the top, bottom, left, or right, and we can uh, turn this off and use a loose crop or regular, and we can just kind of scale it down. Or one thing I would do, for example, on uh, BitChute is I'll come over here, and I don't actually make them all 480p, uh, but what I do is I keep them... Um, I, what I'll do is I will do like a 720. So if I just do a 720, um, there you go, uh, 720 by 1280. And then that way it gives me the smaller format size going out. So it's intrinsically going to be a lot smaller uh, sorting it over to there. So we can, uh, we can actually just toggle this for optimal for the source, which we'll set it to whatever it is, and um, filters. So you can do a variety of filters. You can sharpen them. You can do some form of rotation on the video. Um, here's denoising it. A lot of different options we have over here. So you can also make it grayscale. So if you'd like to take this video and turn it into a black and white, you can go ahead and do that. This is your video quality. So the constant quality uh, is a slider bar. Uh, so if you know anything about video quality, this is lawless, lossless, it's lawless, that's right. It is lossless, so it's going to be as high quality possible. Or you can go all the way down here, which is gonna look like total absolute pixelated garbage. Um, we're talking worse than Atari here. Um, and so you can go ahead and set that. Now, 23, 24 is about what I usually do. You can also go in and just choose a constant bit rate. So I did this on a video the other day. I transcoded for my other channel, and it was so large. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to use the bandwidth for this. And so I just ran it through Handbrake, and I cut this number down from 6,000 down to 4,500. And that worked a pretty, uh, pretty good way. The two-pass encoding, this is a feature that was added into Handbrake a little bit more recently, I'd say within a couple years, which allows you to uh, collect a lot more information. It gives you a, a lot better uh, transcode, although it takes about twice as long to make your transcoding. You can disable that if you want right there. And then there's a few other options. And then here is your audio. So on a DVD, for example, you might see a few different audio channels depending on what it is. So you can choose where, uh, which audio channels get encoded with the video. And also, by the way, you can encode multiple audio channels in because many of your players like VLC, for example, can choose which audio track you're playing. Cody does the same as well. Subtitles, any subtitles will appear there. And then any chapter divisions will appear here. And then tags gives you your metadata. So I don't know of any other way to adjust metadata on videos. Um, I haven't looked uh, thoroughly, but if you know how to change metadata on a video file without doing anything else, please leave that in the comments down below for me. I'd, I'd really appreciate that information. I just, not enough for me to go ahead and search it out right now. But if you don't know off the top of your head, go ahead and do that. But you can put in the titles, actors, directors, and then, you know, that metadata will be used. So that's how Handbrake is going to work. Go ahead and run all your things. You can add it to the queue. And then we have a queue listing here, which will show you all the things in your queue. We can do a preview, which is going to give us previews of the video. All right. And then the activity is going to give us, you know, any of the, the background logging type information. Here's some presets. You can go very fast 30, very fast 720. So you can actually go in here and just do, uh, do a variety of different preset type things. So here's Vimeo, YouTube HQ. Um, so there's different options. Here's different devices. So for an Android, there's so many different presets. So if I wanted to go ahead and just use one of these, let's say we want to put this up on like, um, uh, let's see, there's Roku, Vimeo, YouTube HQ. Okay, so like this one here might be one that I would do for BitChute. Just double click on that. 
um, and then it should give you, uh, it should reload the settings. I, I don't use that feature much. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, there are a lot of pre-settings in there, which gives you some information. All right, let's go ahead and see how this would work under a movie. So first is under your preferences uh, and under advanced, you have a few different uh, DVD codecs. You can use libdvd-nav or uh, libdvd-read. So you can monitor destination disk free space. So make sure you're not going to run out of space. There's scale down high definition previews. Um, so automatically scan DVDs when loaded if you wanted to do that. And over here, we just have some basic things. I usually just keep things set here. Uh, unless I'm having a problem, then I might toggle that. It might resolve some issues. I'm going to go under our file and select this as the scan the DVD source. And what I have here is I threw To Kill a Mockingbird in here. Um, so just go ahead and throw that in. And then now we'll get a chance to see a lot more information. So... Uh, you can see it detects what it is. It shows us um, there's uh, some other options. Here is your uh, size. Of course, this is standard uh, size dimensions for DVD. And under audio, this one does not have any other sub, uh, subtitle or any other uh, audio tracks. It looks like it's English only if you happen to have... A variety. Actually, this tells me it should have some French as well, but maybe it did not find those. Um, under subtitles, here's some subtitles, and then you can choose to burn those in or not, and then here are the various chapter divisions. If you'd like to name the chapters, you can go ahead and do that, and then here you can finally put in your tags. Here's our, oops, not our presets, here's our preview, and then you can preview through what it looks like just to make sure it's it's correct you can see it's widescreen from the preview things like that and then if you were to hit your start button it's going to start spinning this up and creating a file which as I said we're not going to do that on this video here some countries that is perfectly legal some countries it is not some questions it is questionable so you need to examine the various laws in your country to figure out What's the best approach for you? But anyway, uh, there is a little bit about video transcoding. The absolute applications, I use this for a lot. I don't just use it for movies or things like that. I actually use this more frequently to scale things around, do some fine controlling on my video transcoding that I don't get inside of Caden Live at this point. So definitely have a look at Handbrake if you need to do any form of video manipulation. And if you know how to adjust video uh, metadata data, Leave that in the comment down below uh, on Linux specifically uh, because I'd like to have a look at some of that as well. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.